Mike, how about a football nightcap here in Salt Lake City? It is senior night and the final football game at Rice Eccles Stadium in 2017. The Utes expected to play in front of the 51st consecutive sellout here in Salt Lake. The Buffs of Colorado and the Utes of Utah in one of effectively a bowl play-in game. As we welcome you inside the broadcast booth, along with Petros Papadakis, I'm Guy Haberman. Great to have you with us. It's been a season of heartbreaking losses and close calls for both of these teams. And yet, as we talk to the coaches this week, they are convinced they have teams focused and motivated. Are you buying it? Yeah, absolutely. These are both solid football programs. They are both well coached and they both feel like they got a raw deal this year. And if you're a Buffs fan or a Utes fan, you feel the same way. You thought this team should have seven or eight wins coming into this game. But reality is reality. One of these teams has got to go home tonight without bowl practice without a bowl game and that's going to hurt because they're both good football teams that are very physical well and a little more hurts for the Utes they will be without Tyler Huntley oh. their quarterback all season long he did miss two games because of injury there he is just about an hour and a half ago watching as his teammates warmed up and so in his place will be the senior Troy Williams getting the opportunity and it's a great story guy because Troy Williams was the captain of this team voted a week before the season started he played all last year and Huntley beat him out because they love his spark he's the quarterback of the future but it's senior night for Troy Williams he's going to get to lead this offense and see what he can do not ideal for coach Whittingham but a great moment for Troy Williams and a great opportunity and so the focus turns to the ground and Zach Moss yeah Zach Moss is truly a tough strong back in the mold of Utah backs of the past, but he's not as consistent as those guys. That's going to have to grow as he gets older in this program. He's got to be more violent, a lot like he was in the USC game, because game, this is a tough deal. Well, you want tough? You want an angry running back? I do. You got one, the man that leads the nation and carries on the other side of things, Philip Lindsay. Yeah, him and his awesome hair have been a pleasure to cover over the years in the Pac-12. For the last two years, this guy has been the heartbeat of the backfield for Colorado, along with Seppo Lufau last year. He's taken the reins completely as a leader. He's the angriest runner in the conference. He's almost got 15 yards. He can 1,500 yards. He can cross that path tonight. And he is the most willful runner in the conference. A captain of this team, Philip Lindsay, is a stud. Can't wait to see what he can do for his team tonight to try to extend his football career. You take a look at what happened last week, the heartbreak for the Utes, who have lost now six of their last seven. This is with 28 seconds left. They called a timeout, Petros, and so Washington decided to try and win the game. Kyle called a timeout. Coach Whittingham tried to get Washington just to execute and take a knee. But Chris Peterson said, OK, we'll throw the ball downfield. And Jake Browning worked a little magic. Two big completions. Washington gets a kick in a game that Utah was controlling. They lose and don't even get the chance in overtime in Seattle. Another heartbreaking loss for the Utes this year. And Coach Whittingham knows what that's like. They've had a few. The urgency on the ball. He has been to a bowl game in 10 of his 12 seasons. And you include the game he coached in place of Urban Meyer, 10 and 1 as a bowl coach. Meanwhile, for Mike McIntyre, trying to do something that hasn't been done in over a decade in Boulder, which is appear in back-to-back -back bowl games, coaching, as you see, in his 100th game, coming off a Pac-12 South title last year. So, Colorado won the toss and deferred. Utah will have the football first. Damari Simpkins is back deep as Davis Price is set to kick away and start off what is a do or die night here in Salt Lake. And Simpkins is going to let this fly. And so the Utah offense is going to come on the field. So it'll begin from the 12. And it will be Zach Moss on first down. And he will get swallowed up. Drew Lewis is there along with Malumba for the stop and so what a year it's been for Troy Williams Pete he was named the captain less than a week before the season just days later found out he wouldn't be the starter for his senior season and yet with Huntley hurt he has gotten some opportunities and here he is starting on senior night yeah interesting turn of events for him in his career but he has been a class act throughout the year handling everything here he is on play action finding Darren Carrington and not fooled the defense, Evan Worthington is there for the stop. 
Well, you know, Colorado's defense lost a lot of guys from last year's team. A lot of those guys playing in the NFL. The buff back that time, Evan Worthington, chasing down Carrington and making sure he didn't get down the field. But I like the call for Utah trying to find ways to get Troy Williams comfortable, move him, short passing, things of that nature. So a third down and seven. Williams with a blitz coming, and he throws complete. Damari Simpkins a first down to the 25-yard line. A nine-yard pickup. You can see Troy Williams relieved to get that second downfield pass out of the way and record a first down after the penalty. Damari Simpkins kind of a Swiss Army knife of a player. That's what his offensive coordinator, Troy Taylor, describes him as. They've had some trouble, the Utes, developing outside receivers over the years, but that time... Troy Williams stands in and is able to deliver. Remember the backup today, Cooper Bateman has never thrown a pass here at Utah. There's Troy McCormick just into the game. Very close to and should have the first down. Afo Laguda finally ran him out after a pickup of 11. And they're doing a good job mixing up their personnel here in the early onset of the game. Troy McCormick Jr. is the fastest back that Utah has, and they find a good way to get him out in space. Nice blocking on the edge from Damari Simpkins there. Lock it up a defender, and that's enough for a first down. And Utah's playing pretty quick. So a drive that started with a penalty is now moving out across the 35. There is Moss grinding for two yards. Chris Malumba with the tackle. Petros, what, what's to watch for tonight? Well, we saw the first catch of the game, which is Darren Carrington. There he is. You know he transferred from Oregon. He is one of the more versatile and explosive players Utah has had out on the edge catching the ball in a long time, but he has been beat up. And on the other side, we talked about all the guys that Colorado lost in their secondary. One guy they kept is Isaiah Oliver. Now, he has been hurt, but man, has he been impactful when he's in there. Here's Moss weaving his way out towards the 45 to bring up third down and short. The captain, the senior Derek McCartney on the tackle. On that last play, it was your two guys, Isaiah Oliver and Darren Carrington, matched up at the top as the play went left. And if Carrington is healthy, I would expect Isaiah Oliver to go with him almost everywhere he goes to stay in man coverage with that one player. It'll be the safety of Alabi Laguda lined up in the slot to the top against Carrington right now as Moss, the running back, comes to the bottom. Two tight ends and Williams running behind them for the first down. Now, this is a great equalizer for the Utah offense, is running the quarterback. And if Tyler Huntley can't go, who is the more explosive runner, Troy Williams is going to be able to do it. He is also very effective with his legs. When you run that quarterback, you run the risk of the guy getting hurt, obviously. Utah's starter is out. But at the same time, you really do even things up for the offense, allowing for an extra blocker to find more lanes inside the line of scrimmage. That time, very successful for Troy Williams. Nice play call. And Moss again sticking a nose and Troy Williams, the quarterback, had his face in there as well at a good pickup on first down of six yards. Rick Gamboa, the captain on the defense with the stop. All right, Greg. Here is Troy Williams complete to Moss out of the backfield. What a great year he's had catching the football. Still on his feet and down to the 25-yard line. Drew Lewis finally ends the run after a pickup of 25. Troy Taylor's having a heck of a game to start out with the calls, really doing things to make Troy Williams comfortable. They had first three downs in the opening, uh, three first downs in the opening drive, but they stalled after a sack. Uh, they're getting it going now with Moss, and DJ Elliott, the D coordinator, told us they have had a lot of trouble tackling big backs, and you saw that there on the run with Moss. He did a great job. He already has 61 yards of total offense. This is Devontae Henry Cole sidestepping Lewis and falling forward near a first down. And he should have the first down just inside the 15. Colorado has struggled this year a whole bunch against the run. It's not the personality of what Coach McIntyre wants his team to be, but they've replaced a lot of guys on that defense. Eight or nine starters, and it's still a glaring problem. Another carry for Devontae Henry Cole, reversing field and losing ground off Olabi Laguda. 
and a loss of one. We talked to Troy Taylor this week, Petros. They really struggled last year in the red zone. They struggled early this year in the red zone. He felt like they've been better lately. Now they've scored a lot of touchdowns in the red zone recently. You see there, 11 of 18. That's pretty good in the last five games. And they also have an excellent kicker, which changes the way they call plays in Matt Gay. And meanwhile, a second down and 11 for Utah's offense with Zach Moss taking the pitch from Troy Williams and finding some space to deliver a blow and stay on his feet for the touchdown. Well, you said he runs hard. That's one of the most punishing runs I've seen this year from anybody. Zach Moss taking that pitch and then just taking it up into the line of scrimmage with no regard for anything. Well, here is Matt Gay, who has not mixed an extra point, missed an extra point this year. The Lou Groza Award finalist splits the uprights. And so Utah, without a starting quarterback, Tyler Huntley, picking up where they left off. And Zach Moss rolling for the first score of the game. Utes lead 7 0. Winner of this game becomes ball eligible, and Zach Moss just gave the Utes an early leg up with an incredible touchdown run. Six plays, 73 yards. 63 yards just for the sophomore on that drive. And so this is the first return, but it won't be one. Bluffs offense for the first time. Tell us what to watch for when they're on the field. Petros. There he is, the quarterback, Steven Montez. Big, tall, fast, and strong, still developing. And of course, defensively, you got Low Lotulele for Utah, one of the strongest defensive linemen in the country. He's getting better and better. Montez with 14 on the play clock. First carry of the game for Philip Lindsay, and it's going just about nowhere. There is the man you're looking for. Yeah, four-year starter. Utah prides themselves, Guy, on their inside play of the defense, the front seven. And that's why guys like Julian Blackman are out there one-on-one, -on -one, asked a lot of the corners over the years, as Kyle Whittingham, and they have delivered, especially Blackman. Chris Bounds, the H-back. And Montez is following him. He gets the block from him, breaks the tackle of Ballard, and he picks up 21 yards. Very close to a first down. Bradley Anai on the tackle. Well, guy, we they talked about... Petro, excuse me, they might give him the first down. I think he's going to get it. You know, we talked about how Utah uses the quarterback running the ball as an equalizer. Well, Colorado can do the same thing. And you got a guy like Steven Montez who's got a big arm, but he's also got great legs. And finding a way to keep him balanced between the two and working progression and looking downfield has been a challenge this year. That was an explosive run. And he showed some good hips. Over 400 total yards of offense for Montez alone. 376 through the air last week or two weeks ago in the loss to USC. Philip Lindsay, huge hole, another first down. Casey Hughes, Donovan Thompson ended that after an 11 yard pickup. Both these backs are just going to go when they see it. Philip Lindsay saw a big hole. He tries to split the defenders there. Donovan Thompson ended up making the tackle. Mike McIntyre's first recruit when he took over was Philip Lindsay, who made the goal. I'm going to play in every game, and he has so far. Here's Montez looking for him as he wheels down the field and throw. Instead, shoots it over the head of the H-back, Chris Bounds. Kavika Lua Fatasanga in coverage. Nice. Second down. You thought the coverage was good. No, I thought the pronunciation was better. The coverage was good, though. There's no doubt about it. They wanted Montez out on the other side to get the wheel round on the backside. Kind of a trick play call from Coach McIntyre's offense, but Philip Lindsay was covered up. Second down. Montez pumps, more pressure. He's got Bobo, and he brings it in. Dropped him. Second drop for Bobo. Remember, he had a drop on the first.
drive of the game. Kendrick Young, as I was giving Bobo the catch, said, not so fast. Well, 58 receptions going into the game for Bryce Bobo. He's been fabulous. And now because they called the pass on first down, they're in a third long situation. Third down jump is on in the muss. As the Buffs are driving or trying to drive down near the Utah student section. Devin Ross, the motion man on third and ten. Underneath and it's batted down. No sir, says Lua Fatasanga. And another third down stop. Play at that Rover linebacker position. Lua Fatasanga was just kind of reading the eyes of Steven Montez. He wanted to get Bryce Bobo on a drive route. You see him there, but Lua Fatasanga. Lua Fasatonga <laughs> saw it, got up and knocked it down. God, I love these Utah names. 51 yard attempt coming here for James Stefano, the Lou Groza semifinalist. He's made nine straight field goals this season. It's got the leg, but he yanked it left, and that breaks the streak of nine in a row. Just his fifth miss of the season. So a better drive for the Buffs, but Cal Whittingham's defense maintains. The one thing they can look to is say, we've got our back going. He has been able to run the ball and, and get some space out there. Montez showed some patience getting the ball out. I think the play calling kind of stalled on him. They tried that wheel route. They thought they're going to get a touchdown, and then they got behind the sticks and weren't able to figure it out. Colorado's got 49 rushing yards on that drive, so they, they had some good bright spots, but the missed kick gives the ball right back to Troy Williams and Zach Moss, who's having a heck of a game so far. And Moss is in the game beside Williams with Carrington in motion. And there's Moss again, just pushing and pushing. The first contact just does not bring him down. Evan Worthington after a pickup of five. Isaiah Oliver there with him. Moss, of course, the high school teammate of Tyler Huntley, not starting in this game and Damari Simpkins with three sophomores from Broward County who showed up and have brought some electricity to an offense this year that is ninth in the Pac-12 at 29 points per game but they scored 30 on a Washington team last year you don't do that against here's Moss with another big carry and Lewis brings him down by the back of the helmet and so a flag comes down maybe got him on the name plate too Personal foul, grasp the helmet opening, number 20 of the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run, first down, Utah. Never heard it said like that. An Grasping opening in the, the helmet. helmet opening. But here's the run from Moss. You see him coming over out of the shotgun, and the hole's right there. Nice blocking, kind of a zone scheme. And you see him go back, back right of the, the hel helmet right down. the helmet opening. That's yeah, it. I guess there was an opening back there. Not a big one. So all told, 20 yards plus 15, a 35-yard sequence. And here is Henry Cole, who gets upended. There is Lewis taking out a little aggression. But it's been a steady diet of Moss and Devontae Henry Cole. And they've got McCormick going a little bit. All, all three backs have gotten touches uh, to start this game. Really nice game plan from Troy Taylor. There's something on that edge for the Buffaloes that they really like, but a really physical finish there by Drew Lewis. Probably angry, like you said, after grabbing the opening in the helmet. Two tight ends. In now, Hanley and Fakaloa Tonga for Utah. Instead, it's a throw. It's Carrington out of bounds, pulling down the defender, Isaiah Oliver, with him at a flag lands where they were doing battle. Oliver saying, I was the one being interfered with. Pass interference, number 26 of the defense. The foul occurred in the end zone by where the ball is placed at the two yard line. First down. What do you think? I think Utah's going to run the ball now. <laughs> but here's <laughs> Oliver. He does initiate that contact, gets into the chest. He does do a good job of getting his head around, but just way too much contact to start. I like how he's trying to deny Carrington the, the room, but you've got to give him a little more room than that. Moss already with a touchdown. He's in the backfield. Now, this is interesting. Shotgun inside the five with Handley, the tight end. Now moving left. Here is Moss, and he is in. His second touchdown of the game. Oof. Ground and pound. 
Khan and the Utes with a chance to make it 14 to nothing. Man, poor Derek McCartney. These guys are getting posterized. Man, this is unbelievable. Moss is knocking these Colorado tacklers off him like they're Pop Warner players in this first quarter. And they're almost at 100 yards rushing already in the game. He added five pounds of muscle in the offseason. Jeez. That's, that's a powerful five, Matt Gay. Two of two on extra points and still perfect on the season. Back-to-back -back drives of 66 and 73 yards. And Zach Moss doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Now with nine touchdowns on the season and over 100 total yards in this game. Where's your last game tape? Is that in the archives somewhere? Notre Dame USC 2000. KD Nixon bringing it out for Colorado. And he eludes two tacklers, stays in bounds across the 30. Kenrick Young helps push him out. Wow, what a score. Thank you, Greg. Here's Montez. Jay McIntyre. This one without flags on the field. That's in bounds. A catch. Julian Blackman got over there after a pickup of 20 yards. Montez looks better and better in this game, and he's been pretty sharp. He had Bobo with the drop on the last drive. That time he dropped it in right between the corner and the safety to Jay McIntyre. Nice touch. And McIntyre held on, and now here's Philip Lindsay again, bouncing it and tripping up. Henniger might have been the man there. Let's take a look at that previous play and the catch from McIntyre. Nice job with the footwork. That's a catch in the NFL. Second down and 11 after the loss by Lindsey. Montez. Pressure. Tautioli in pursuit. And he will just heave this out of bounds. Out of the tackle box. Beyond the line of scrimmage. Well, one thing that really impresses me about Montez is as he develops as a player, only a sophomore, is he is 6'5". I mean, that's a six foot five guy out there eluding defenders and finding a way to get his throw off. And that, that is not easy to do at that height. Very fast. If this guy can get consistent, he'll be one of the best quarterbacks in the conference. Got himself in great shape this offseason, down to 225 pounds. Last play of the first quarter is a third down. Montez, a bullet too high for Winfrey. First down yardage, but they couldn't connect. And that's how the quarter will end. It's been all Utah and on the ground. A game that will send the winner into bowl eligibility and the loser home. One quarter in the books. And the Utes lead the Buffs 14 0 on FS1. Well, moments ago, Philip Lindsay holding his helmet and walking towards the Colorado locker room as oh. the first quarter ended. And that guy is a war daddy for Colorado. He doesn't go into the locker room unless it's pretty serious. He, he looks okay, and they haven't taken his helmet, but a very interesting development. Meanwhile, a fourth down to start the second quarter. Alex Kinney spinning that one backwards. Booby Hobbs, the fair catch at just about the 12-yard line. Devontae Henry Cole, the running back, back into the game, and he takes it here, bouncing it outside, getting one block. And spinning forward for another Moss-esque run before Nick Fisher brings him down. Well, I like the fact they're getting Cole and McCormick, both of those guys under 200 pounds going, and they're getting those guys going on the edge, and then the changeup is Zach Moss on the inside, and it's really keeping Colorado's defense off balance. They're having a hard time tackling everybody running the ball for Utah right now. Big block on that outside by the tight end, Siale Pakilo Atanga as well, as Moss comes back into the game on first down, and they're gonna feed him. Gets away from Edwards for a moment, then Edwards comes back with the help of Worthington to finish him off. Yeah, usually a guy like Edwards, and I know he looks smaller because he's wearing a single digit, he, he's 350 pounds. And if a guy like that gets his hand, doesn't that number look so small? On, <laughs> if a guy like yep. that gets his hands on you, the play is usually over. And uh, that's why Utah has been doing such a good job with their offensive line in the last few weeks. They're developing and getting better and better. 
keeping their backs clean. That time, Edwards got free and got right on top of Moss. He's, looked, he's lost 35 pounds since the spring. He came in at 385. Here's Williams taking a shot, and he's got Singleton down inside the 25-yard line. He beat Dante Wigley to the 24 and a pickup of 40 yards. Well, that is the second absolutely dime-like throw from Williams, who's taken great advantage of his opportunity as a captain to start here as a senior in the final game at Rice Eccles Stadium. You can't throw it any better than that. He just ran right under it. This offense hasn't skipped a beat without Tyler Huntley tonight. The fake to Henry Cole, and Williams breaks a tackle. Trying to get to the edge and shoved towards the white mark by Isaiah Oliver. Good job by Oliver getting on top of that play and preventing more. But it's a pretty interesting thing. For me, it's mind-boggling that quarterbacks in today's day and age are expected to drop balls in like that and be patient and work progression and throw it and then run the ball right into a guy like Isaiah Oliver and uh, have a violent run and break tackles and then come back and run the offense. Tim Tebow showed us the right way to do it for many years in Florida, and you just see it more and more now, these running quarterbacks that are just expected to do so much within the context of these offenses. This is Moss bouncing it through a hole and picking up another Utah first down to the 13-yard line. Finally, Evan Worthington ended the play after 10 yards. But to your point, particularly in this league, Manny Wilkins at Arizona State, Khalil Tate at Arizona, just in the desert, they're facing off earlier today. You think about matching up with them, how difficult that can be. Well, imagine coordinating a defense in this conference. You know, one week you're playing a guy like Josh Rosen who drops back and throws beautiful balls, and, and then you're facing a guy who can run the ball in Montez who can throw it well. There's, there's a lot of variations, a lot of different offenses, a lot of innovation. Cody Ippolito in the game, the fullback leading the way for Moss, who squeezes through the pile and gets down to about the eight-yard line. Rick Gamboa, the stop. Uh, Utah can pick up a first down at the two-yard line. The tenth play of this drive coming up for the Utes. And it's getting to the point where Colorado's going to need just to possess the ball a little bit to protect their defense. You know, these guys are starting to get gassed. And it, it's early in the game, but Utah is taking it to them with every ounce of physicality they have. And they're being very successful. The Utes look like the team off a of bye. Here's Williams. Delay into the end zone. Touchdown, Utah. And the senior getting the opportunity on senior day. Puts up the Utes by three scores. What a story for that young man. He was the starter all of last season. He got the C on his chest just days before he was told he wouldn't be the starting quarterback to open the season. And talking to the coaches this week, they've said he's been nothing but everything you would want out of the captain, Matt Gay, for the point after three for three on this game. They say Troy Williams has been an incredible teammate, and it must have been so hard for him. But here's the payoff. Well, and when you get the running backs going and everybody's watching them, things are going to open up for the quarterback a little bit. You got one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Williams is able to deliver the ball beautifully. That time, the threat of the running back just too much, and he marches into the end zone. 21 to nothing. The previous six meetings since these two teams came off their 49-year hiatus from now playing Petros, and boy, it was missed. And they entered the Pac-12 together. They've all been one-score games, but Colorado's got work to do as Katie Nixon brings it out and into space and just about out to the 25-yard line with the forward progress. As Philip Lindsay, we saw him go into the locker room earlier. He's back into the game. Trouble for Montez, and he goes down. Bradley Anai and Filippo Mocafisi with the sack. Filippo Mocafisi has been the vocal leader of this football team throughout the year. That time, Colorado wanted to get Philip Lindsay on one of those option routes on the outside as you see him go hot, but Montez, no time to look downfield or find his back. Absolutely swallowed by Mocafisi. Second down at 18. And this is Montez running. Got a block, but Chase Hansen slams him down with Lecky Fotu following after a pickup of two. 
This was just a quarterback design run, a power play. They pull around the guard and the tackle and lead through with a fullback, and it's still not enough because the safety, like a missile, comes flying in. Chase Hansen making sure that Montez is on the ground. What a play, and now third and very long. Hansen signed five years ago as a quarterback, making his impact as the quarterback of the defense. Montez setting up the screen to Lindsey. Foe two right on his heels, can't get him. And Lindsey squirms across the 30. Terrell Burgess at the 32, but shy of the first down. A pickup of 13 yards. And so the sack too much to overcome, and Alex Kinney on the punt. I tell you, I'm very impressed with just the level of aggression from this Utah team. They expected Colorado to be aggressive and physical. That's their personality. They are more than matching it so far. Ruby Hobbs receives the punt and nowhere to go. 48-yard punt, no return. <laughs> 143 remaining here in the first half. Troy Williams over the middle complete. Darren Carrington. His second catch of the game, a 16-yard pickup and a first down. They haven't needed Carrington that much. He is their most explosive playmaker, especially out there on the perimeter. He's been banged up, but getting the ball down the field to him on first down. Utah's threatening again. He's in the slot to the bottom. Williams looking that way, and he's got Carrington back-to-back -back catches, lunging for the first down. Gets marked shy. Drew Lewis prevented the first down, and so second and short. They had Drew Lewis running with Carrington, and that is a linebacker on one of the better wide receivers in the conference, and that is a matchup that Troy Williams recognized right away, getting the ball to Carrington two plays in a row. Second down and less than a yard for Zach Moss. Plenty of space with defenders on his back. Timothy Coleman riding him to bring him down inside the 40 to the 34-yard line, a 15-yard run. And this could be a back-breaking drive. Utah's already over 300 yards of offense here in this first half. Every one of them kind of seems like that. Every run takes a little football out of Colorado. Under a minute now, underneath, Carrington steps out of bounds near a first down. And I think they're going to give him the first down. Nick Fisher. There for the finish. Move the chains again. And it's really the arrival of Zach Moss in this football game and how much he's been able to take football, like we said, out of this Colorado defense that opens up everything else for Troy Williams. But to his credit, he's been very patient back there. He's been looking for receivers. He's been working his progression. And Troy Taylor's caught a real rhythm calling play. Moss at the bottom and going that way. He can't hang on on the spiral from Troy Williams. Moss 123 rushing yards in this game. In addition, a catch for 25. And Kyle Whittingham's team, if there's any question about how they respond to a tough loss, it's remarkable, Petros. The men in red have lost six of seven. Just don't look like that now. Churning, Moss, bodies everywhere. What are you doing to him, number two? He is just taking the football out of Colorado in this first half. They, they're going to hope he doesn't come out for the second half. It's been an absolute clinic on how to run the ball physically. He's not that concerned about both hands on the ball because he's just knocking everybody around with that offhand. And they seem to be clawed at it, but good ball security. Plenty of time here, but they won't need it. Troy Williams, high stepping in. Well, it's pretty simple. If you can't tackle the back, the zone read game is going to be pretty lethal, and it has been twice now for Troy Williams. Pulling the ball and taking it across the goal line himself. What a night on senior night for the captain of the team getting the start. Have to be happy for that young man. Four rushing touchdowns, two from Moss, two from Williams. 
Matt Gay, 4 of 4, and Utah is over 200 yards rushing. A crushing running performance. Zach Moss, 163 rushing yards all by himself, and a 28 to nothing Utah lead. So, the Utes in control in Salt Lake. Coming up next, we'll send you to LA. Mike Hill, Mark Helfrich with the State Farm Halftime Show. 28 to nothing as we look ahead towards the third quarter. Colorado will receive the football first, but they have a deep hole to dig themselves out of. We welcome you to the booth. Petros Papadakis, Guy Haberman, great to have you here with us. The winner of this game becomes bowl eligible. Right now, it looks like it's going to be Utah. We talked about it beforehand, Petros. Both these teams talked the talk this week. They were all ready to roll. Utah walked it in that first half. Oh, man, they came out ready to go. They were hitting on all cylinders from the second they took the field, and they really took the game, the violence of the game, the physicality of the game, and that's how both these teams want to play. But, man, did they take it to Colorado right off the bat. Troy Williams getting the ball to Zach Moss, and he has been an absolute terror for this Colorado defense, running people over. There you see the strong safety victimized by Zach Moss. This is not a replay. That's another play that he runs over McIntyre to get into the end zone. He's been wildly physical. That's opened things up in the quarterback run game for Williams. He's got a couple touchdowns. And guys like Filippo Mocafisi, Cody Barton are just wreaking havoc on this Colorado offense. Colorado uninspired performance to say the least. Imbalance numbers, 21 first downs. 21 first downs to just six in that first half. Uh, but as we say, Colorado with the football first here to start the second. Now we take a look at those first half stats, Petros. You see the 21 first downs. Wow. Four drives that resulted in points for Utah, all of them over 65 yards, three of them over 70 yards, and each touchdown on the ground. Zach Moss with two rushing, Troy Williams with two rushing. And keep in mind, this is a game that Utah right before the kick announced they would not have Tyler Huntley, their starting quarterback, as Montez is incomplete on first down. I know you're looking forward to that. Coming up next Saturday, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on Fox. We're streaming on Fox Sports Go. Is Wisconsin going to get some respect? I know. That's the team you had them in. Did you I? have them in, yeah. I watched. I'm holding you to it. I want them to finish. I'm defeated at the Big Ten. Finish it up. Montez, Jay McIntyre, his second catch near the sideline. That looked like a replay of his catch in the first half. Yeah, just one of the small bright spots in the first half for the Buffs. Jay McIntyre, obviously related to the head coach, has become a very reliable option for his pops. 25 receptions, 348 yards coming into the game, a couple touchdowns. That gives him a little spark. Philip Lindsay dancing and just cannot squeeze through that hole it seems to close quickly Donovan Thompson on the stop but if I was going to be able to feed one back in this conference in the second half of a game where I'm being beat it's Philip Lindsay he brings it the same on every drive that he can nice tackle by Thompson there but but Lindsay's going to keep coming throughout the game regardless of the score and, and maybe he can find a way to fight his team back into this maybe that was his 10th carry. This is his 11th. There's a big hole. Getting a block from Bobo. Getting around him for a first down before Ballard runs him out at the 25. So a little bit of daylight now opening up for the Colorado offense with the holding call and the pass play to McIntyre previously. And now two runs for Lindsey. And he really presses that edge and tries to find it up the sideline. Knocked out of bounds for a good game. 13, his longest of the game. Montez looking once underneath Chris Bounds the tight end dancing inside the 10 into the six yard line. Corian Ballard on the stop there and now things opening up a little for the buffs. Well Lindsay really kind of stretching things out with the wheel route and this time they do bring the tight end underneath on the drive route and get him the ball. First trip into the red zone of the game for the Buffs, and they're going to hand to Philip Lindsay. Spinning his way down to the one, and he's in. Touchdown. 
And maybe the fire is not gone for Colorado. Well, they give it to their Tasmanian devil to run angry. That is his nickname, and Philip Lindsay takes a little bit of that frustration out on the Utah defense in what was a pretty good drive for Coach Mack's team coming out in the second half and saying, hey, we're still here. So there you go. A nice drive by the Buffs. Let's see if they can capitalize on it by forcing Utah off the field again. First opportunity for James Stefano, who missed a field goal early in this game, but this is first point after, of course, and that's right through. And so Colorado on the board, they went three and out to start the game, they went three and out to start the second half, but when in doubt, go to Phillip Lindsay, his 36th career rushing touchdown. Yeah, pretty simple. They got Hagler coming around, pulling. And he tries to take a chip off of Hanson, and then everybody gets involved pushing Lindsay into the end zone. He was sitting on somebody's chest, so his knees weren't down. Here he is right on top of uh, Lua Fatasanga. Lua, Lua, Fasa, Lua Fatasanga, yes. And Mike McIntyre told us this week he wasn't sure when he signed Philip Lindsay if he would ever play for him. But of course, he was recruited initially by the former assistant Eric Bieniemy, who's one of the greatest running backs in the history of the program. A heck of a running back coach. And he's in Kansas City now with the Chiefs. And uh, he saw something in Philip Lindsay, who told us this week that his last two were Utah and Colorado. And uh, the young man that is a Denver kid went to Denver South High School, wanted to stay home and help his buffs get back to where they once were, back when the man that recruited him was leading the way for a career high all-time yardage mark. You know, and here's a guy in, in Lindsay who's 5'8", 190 pounds. He's always had to earn it and prove it in, in every single situation that he's been in. He's always had to climb his way into the position that he's in, and it serves him well. What a great career he's had. Troy McCormick out of the backfield off of Lobby Laguda. Cuts him down, a loss of four. I wouldn't mess around too much if I was Utah. I would get back to what was working in the first half, and that is Zach Moss running the ball and the zone read with Williams and Zach Moss. This is just a quick throw out on the edge, trying to get five easy ones to start out the drive, and they start out instead behind the sticks because of very alert defense. Moss off, Devante Henry Cole, who ran effectively for 32 yards on four carries in the first half, comes into the game. Tech 19, Tech 19. Tech 19. Henry Cole, huge hole! First down, dragging Lewis out across the 45 to the 44 yard line. Now this is what has gotten it going all day for Utah, just their base run. And they do it out of a shotgun, nothing too physical. Zone blocking scheme, you see a nice cut block there by Uhatafe. And Henry Cole looking physical, like Zach Moss finishing that run. And his defense trying to figure out Worthington as Henry Cole slipped through his fingers, and there is Leo Jackson the third, the senior from Decatur, Georgia, who's been an effective player for them all year long, but that might be his first tackle of the night. Came into the game with 58 tackles, five and a half sacks, and leads the team. There you see Henry Cole getting it going a little bit, 63 yards in a backup roll over uh, behind Zach Moss. Those are Bryce Love numbers too for <laughs> touch. Here's Moss again, battering his way for five hard-earned yards. Evan Worthington, Derek McCartney. And that looks like the rugby pileup that Mitch Wisnowski's used to. Now that's the face that those buffs do not want to see in the second half. That's the guy you just get tired of tackling. They were having a hard time tackling him in the first quarter. Here in the third, if they continue to feed him the ball, he could very easily take the will out of Colorado's defense. First down and 10. Moss is back there with McCormick flanking the quarterback Williams, who is going to throw. And he lines it down the middle of the field over the outstretched fingertips of Darren Carrington. Carrington a little slow to get up. 
but a lot of injuries for him this year. Kind of a struggle to get out onto the field. Had that lower leg injury against UCLA three weeks ago. He missed the Washington State game. He returned in the cold in Seattle last week, although intermittently. So second and 13 now. Four wide with Moss back in there looking for Simpkins who snags it at the 20 and wrestles down at the 19 yard line. Dante Wigley after a pickup of seven with the tackle. Great job by Simpkins making that catch and then trying to make a move kind of in the same motion as making the catch and then conversely a really nice job by Dante Wigley staying with him and making sure he wasn't able to shake him. Look at Simpkins make that catch and then immediately try to dive back to the outside. Good job by Wigley staying with him. Third down and six to go. They need to get the eight. We talked to Troy Taylor about these situations when you have a great field goal kicker like they do in Matt Gay. How does that influence the play calling in the red zone or near the red zone? To the air here and Singleton unable to bring it in. Isaiah Oliver celebrating a great play. They have liked those vertical routes uh, attacking the edge. Every time they get around the 20 yard line that's the second time that Troy Taylor has tried for that. Pretty nice release by Singleton but Oliver in great position that time. Very good coverage by the junior at a good year Arizona. 37 yard try for Matt Gay who is the Utah record holder 25 field goals made this year and he's been fantastic. He's been a 50 yard ace and so this is an effective chip shot for him and that is good. The Lou Groza Award finalist tacks on. It's 31 to 7 here in Salt Lake. It's been a gorgeous day, turned a beautiful night here in Salt Lake City. And the Utes in control just had their first possession that went into the red zone that didn't result in a touchdown. They were four for four. They added the field goal, and this is Ronnie Blackman bringing it out for Colorado. So here's. Steven Montez coming off a career high 376 passing yards two weeks ago against USC. But Petro sees 7 of 15 for 97 in this game. And there is Philip Lindsay running into a brick wall named Bradley Anai with help from Kavika Lua Fatasanga. And, and all, Lindsay can only do so much. I mean, he can only take it in, into the line of scrimmage. But if you've got guys like Lua Fatasanga all up in the hole, you're not going to get the yards you think you're going to get. You're not going to move Mokafisi inside, Lotulele. These guys have been so stout, and they've rushed Montez. They haven't been able to protect him well. This Utah defense has really shown up. Let's see if they can recover from giving up a touchdown drive. I know they don't like doing that. Montez to the air, and that's complete. Winfrey's second catch, and Hobbs gets a shoelace to keep it from being any more than a 14-yard gain. But that does move the chains. And you wonder if Winfrey can get off. He had such a huge game against USC two weeks ago when he had catches of 57 and 79 yards that resulted in touchdowns. Montez with the pump. Comes back the other way. There's Bobo wide open, unattended along the sideline. And now into Utah territory before. Javelin Gidry wrestles him out in a pickup of 28 yards. A little bit more breathing room here in the second half for Steven Montez to drop back and, and get the ball to some of these wide receivers. They have an embarrassment of riches in Colorado as far as wide receivers go. That's why they thought this offense would be so prolific this year. Montez threw it looking for Frazier who was not looking. He was blocking. And so it'll be second down. Clearly a miscommunication. Maybe it was Bobo. Perhaps Frazier was blocking Petros because it was a screen they for Bobo. They had a screen on, and I think that the screen was supposed to be to Bobo, but there was some kind of miscommunication between Montez. Montez has had trouble anticipating throws, not just in this game, but throughout the season. Everything's just a, a skosh late, and that comes with maturity, but they're going to have to shore that up, something they're really going to need to concentrate on going forward with this quarterback. He's got a lot of tools. There's Winfrey again. Past the original line of scrimmage and slithers his way to the 15. Lua Fatasanga there on the stop. But you're right to point out Kylie Fitz not playing in this game. The redshirt senior, such a big part of this defense, made his way all the way from UCLA where his career began. 
And they are hoping if they play in a bowl game, he'll be able to play one last game as a youth. Third five. It's Winfrey at the top. Lined up with Hobbs. Instead, it's Montez keeping, and Montez has a first down. Behind the block of Hagler, it looked like, out in front. Burgess and Barton on the stop. The old speed option. You don't see that very much. <laughs> Steven Montez with an option, it looked like, to pitch it to Philip Lindsay, and that's what attracted most of the attention of the huge defense. He put his foot in the ground and got upfield. Another nice drive by Colorado here. Really marked by Jawan Winfrey's brilliance catching the ball. He's the inside receiver of the three to the top of your screen on first and goal. Montez empty, design run. Backpedaling his way down to about the four-yard line. Donovan Thompson and Bradley Anai there to meet him. And it's second to goal after a pickup of three. And then likely we'll see is Montez going to walk this off. He will. Happy to let the third quarter run out. And so Colorado showing signs of life in this third quarter. But so far, seven points to show for it. And a chance at seven more. Mike McIntyre, Kyle Whittingham, one quarter left. Only one advances to bowl season. Take a look at our game summary as we begin the fourth quarter. It was a 14 quarter, a 14 point first quarter for Utah. Colorado scored in that third quarter. And Steven Montez has gotten going a little bit on these last two drives. Yeah, Mike, Mike McIntyre must have channeled his inner Vince Lombardi at halftime. He, he got this offense going, and the defense has played a little better, forcing a field goal. Let's see what they can do. Right in front of the Muss on second down and goal to start the fourth quarter, looking for their second consecutive scoring drive. And Lindsey stopped by Bradley and I. Yeah, he did a good job getting to the feet of Lindsey before Lindsey could really get his body set, his pads headed toward the line of scrimmage. And I's doing a great job diving into that backfield and making plays. Another third down jump. Less shaky than it was in the first quarter when everybody was here. But the Colorado showing some life here in the second half. Make it interesting here with a touchdown. Montez fakes, following, bounds, and he's into the end zone. With tight ends lead blocking, Aaron Hagler, the guard through the block that opened the hole, and Steven Montez scores back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives for the Buffs, and now they're going for two. Really nice design on the play from the co-offensive coordinators, Brian Lindgren and Darren Cheverini. A lot of movement there. They lined up in a very traditional eye with the big fullback, getting those eyes big for the Utes. Then they fake. Then they come, they fake an option and then come back around with the quarterback run. Very nice design and a good play inside the five for Colorado to score. Here we go. Let's see what they have dialed up for the two point. Four wide. Philip Lindsay not on the field. Montez looking, and there is a drop. Bobo is third of the game right in his hands. Mm. Tough break for Colorado, who's finally got some momentum going, and Bobo having a tough one. But a great drive for Colorado. Trying to scrap back in the bowl season. Steven Montez on the phone after an effective scoring drive. You take a look at the discrepancy between the first seven drives, 122 total yards, no touchdowns. The last two, 151, two scores, a rushing touchdown for Lindsey, and then most recently, a rushing touchdown for Montez. Damari Simpkins takes the line drive, and he's going to bring it out for Utah, running up the back of Cody Barton. And out to about the 22 yard line. And here is Zach Moss right back to him. And he is just small stepping his way across the 40 for a healthy gain of eight. Montez on the phone probably doesn't like what he's hearing there. Tough, tough situation. He did not see or feel a nigh. He was looking downfield at Bryce Bobo, like you said. And if I'm the youths, uh, this is what I do for the remainder of the game on, on first downs or second downs and shorts to keep Montez sitting down as he's become a hotter passer. I'd get the ball to Zach Moss 
and just keep feeding him. And what a heartbreaking moment for Colorado after back-to-back -back touchdown drives and look at yeah, the like great going in field again. position like they weren't going to be stopped. Especially after that third down play by Simpson. Here's Moss again, breaking through, second and third level. And into Colorado territory, Wigley and Worthington. And it takes more than one to bring down Zach Moss, who now is over 1,000 yards rushing for the season. Watch him whirl his way through the pit. I mean, he's using his upper body. He's swinging his arms around. He, he's protecting that football. Moss is starting to find his confidence. I remember after the USC game, Troy Taylor asked him, when did you become Superman? Because he really ran the ball violently against what is obviously a star-laden USC defense. And, and then he had some up and down moments after that. This is one of the great up moments of his football career tonight. A career high as he nears the 200-yard mark, although not on this play. That'll take four away. Nate Landman, who's been good for Colorado in this game, making another play. Nice call dialed up there by D.J. Elliott, trying to take some of the steam out of this Utah run game, and they have been getting it across the formation, and that does enable Nate Landman to blitz in and make a play. There's Coach Elliott. Saw career highs in yards tonight and on the season and now to the air. Darren Carrington inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. Laguda got there after the pickup of 22 yards. And now Carrington, who's slow to warm up to this game, we've seen him more and more as the night's gone along. As Zach Moss has gotten going more and more, exploiting that one on one coverage. And even though he's up against Oliver out on the edge, Utah still liked the matchup and got it to him. But I think if they got Moss the ball a little bit more in the third quarter, you wouldn't have seen the Colorado comeback that we saw. Let's see what they do here with another first down. There, Carrington and Oliver lined up at the bottom on first down and 10 with Moss taking it from Williams and going nowhere. Landman again, the first man there. Yeah, Along with Gamboa. Starting to drop, dive that Jack linebacker into the line of scrimmage. Nate Landman, not a freshman, uh, down in Danville, California, just a freshman. But doing a good job getting into the backfield a couple times on this drive to stifle that first down Utah run. You saw the numbers for Moss, 23 carries. Doesn't it feel like 40? It feels like a lot more because every time he carries the ball, he's carrying about five or six guys with him. <laughs> And he breaks a couple tackles. He's standing back there with Williams right now. That's Singleton at the top with Carrington, Simpkins, and Nakua at the bottom. And Williams reading, reading. And that ball deflected. Worthington got a hand on it. And yet Moss picks it up and turns it into a positive play. And he's still on his feet. Have a night, Zach Moss. Well, Williams had him. He had him on that option pitch. And, and he had the defender committed to him. And he just waited an extra split second to make that pitch, and the pitch ended up in the ground. But Moss, like you said, guys, just unbelievable live body, picks it up and gets it going. That's where the pitch has to happen, right there, not a split second later. But Moss uses good patience, and he's still breaking tackles. Unbelievable. Third down and six to go. Play clock winding as they milk. Williams, pressure, and he is tossed down by Derek McCartney coming in for the sack and pushing the line of scrimmage back to the 30, which would make just past the 30, make about a 47-yard attempt for Matt Gay, which is well in his range. He leads the nation in field goals of over 50 yards, five of six from 50-plus this year. Good stop by Colorado and the forcing of this kick, but but a pretty nice drive by Utah, getting some positive plays after forcing the turnover. Good chance to put more points on the board here with Gay. Officially make it 48 yards. He's already hit in this game from 37 out of the Wisnowski hold, and this ball just pulling right down the middle. Dog leg left for Matt Gay. And after Colorado made a bit of a push, the Utes feeling back in control, just under six minutes away from becoming bowl eligible. Here comes Katie Nixon out of the end zone for Colorado, run out of bounds. So after the Matt Gay field goal, Colorado back onto the field. And there is McIntyre with the catch of the first down, and Hobbs connects with him 
along the sideline after the pickup of seven. Very difficult to move the ball, consistently throwing it, uh, dropping back almost every play against this Utah defense because Morgan Scalley's defense can get to the quarterback with, with a three or four man rush. And, and we saw it a little earlier with an eye forcing that bubble. Montez again to throw, and that ball is incomplete. McIntyre got crunched by Corian Ballard, who's been flying around tonight on defense. Montez loaded up and, and throwing a bullet. Did only get a fingertip on that? Yeah, it really almost got McIntyre destroyed. Ill-advised throw by Steven Montez. So now second down. And 10 to go. Montez 14 to 27, just under 200 yards throwing tonight. He claps and pumps and throws incomplete. Cody Barton broke it up. Now Barton did a good job of, of kind of floating back into the throwing lane and dropping. Right now they're dropping eight guys trying to get Montez to throw a pick. And he was close there. Third, Third long. Down. Yeah. They picked up a fourth and 12 in Colorado earlier in this half. Here comes Hobbs with pressure off the top. Philip Lindsay ran where he came from, but Cody Barton was able to hog tie the star running back and make it fourth down and long. Fourth and seven. Now upcoming for Colorado, and they're leaving the offense on the field with under five minutes. That's not an easy guy to tackle, and Morgan Scalley's defense did a really good job of staying on top. Philip Lindsay and rallying to the ball that time. Cody Barton with a very sure tack. Winfrey at the bottom. They need the 45 as Ross goes in motion. Montez corrals the snap. Steps up pressure. Barton got a hand on him and brought him down. Cody Barton. And a turnover on downs for Colorado. Just said Cody Barton's been a sure tackler. That's about as sure as you can get. Get a 6-5 quarterback down with one hand. And Morgan Scalley, the defensive coordinator, absolutely loves that. Of course, a man that played at Utah and has seen so many come and go. The seniors in this group, 22 of them on this team on this senior night. There is Kylie Fitz. What a long road for him. Filippo Mocafisi, one of the captains on this team and how about Lowell Lotalale anchor in the middle what a night it's been for Troy Williams got to start the quarterback in place of Tyler Huntley always nice to see senior night a lot of work goes into doing this a little pushing and shoving and some frustration afterwards but we talked to Cal Whittingham this week about what this senior class means to him and he said a couple things. One, that this year, through all the adversity, it was this group of 22 seniors that ensured that there was not any spiral, that the group did not cash it in, and we've seen that tonight. Certainly there was none of that. And the other thing he said, and this is very important, he made the point, this was not the group that came into the Pac-12 in 2011, but in the guts of the transition, when it was time for Utah to win the football games, these seniors, the fourth and fifth year guys, are the young men that had such an impact. An impact like Zach Moss, who does not stop. No let up. Another great run by the kid out of Florida, and he has certainly earned his keep for Utah tonight, and they've just had a lot of success running across the formation and getting off tackle. Zach Moss has just been great. You know, you're talking about Utah and their transition into the Pac-12, and they've never won the Pac-12 South, but they've been the most competitive to win it year in and year out, and that's a credit to the way they play people. They just play them toe-to-toe. -to -toe. One of these years, they are going to break through. Here is Moss again, 10 yards shy of 200, and he picks up three more. Inching closer, but it's a great point. They have consistently been a bowl team when they were not in the in the Pac-12, and then in their transition to the Pac-12. This is going to be 11 in 13 years under Kyle Whittingham. 
and everybody has won the Pac-12 South, but Utah. But they have been the most competitive in the conference. They had the best chance the first year. Where Colorado beat them right here in Rice Eccles Stadium. John Embry was their head coach. That was the first Pac-12 win of the year for Colorado that year. Here's Devontae Henry Cole. Apparently, Zach Moss does take a rest. And Cole's been, Henry Cole's been very good in this game as well. You know, it's an interesting point you made about the way Utah has bounced back. They've had a lot of really hard losses, and it's hard to look in the mirror after you had a two-point conversion to beat USC or you had Washington in a position to win. Both road games, you come home empty-handed, but that's never been a problem for Kyle Whittingham's team. Just the balance on this team of, of guys that are coming back from LDS missions or, or young guys or different guys from the islands. The way they take care of each other is just amazing. He's got a great culture here, and they always bounce back and play hard. Troy Williams running behind Cody Ippolito, and he is pulled down just shy of the goal line by Evan Worthington. What really, do do? always been impressed by the balance of this Utah team and, and the, the structure that, that Kyle Whittingham has built. And despite the tough loss again last week, uh, here they come again with a nice victory, it looks like, at home. And those quarterback runs have worked very well, mostly because of the success of the running backs early in this game. Jordan Howard now has come into the game. The running back wearing number 20. And in a show of some sportsmanship with under a minute left. And to keep everybody healthy for their bowl game, what a night, a senior night to remember for Troy Williams, starting in place of the man that replaced him to start the season, Tyler Huntley. And he was 50 to 24, threw for 180 yards, protected the football tonight. A handshake for Kyle Whittingham is going to go to his 11th bowl in 13 seasons as the head man at Utah. That extra practices for Kyle Whittingham, a, a better chance to continue to develop this young quarterback of the future, Tyler Huntley. But what a nice day for Troy Williams to be able to come out and lead this team as a captain after losing the starting job, getting the start tonight, and really being spectacular for the youth. And a night he will not forget. The C on his chest. You talk to the folks around the program, he certainly earned it, and they earned this win. On the other side of things, the defending Pac-12 South champs miss a bowl. Yeah, they miss a bowl. Uh, disappointing for Coach Mack uh, last year. So much success, so much fun to watch that team. They just lost too much to reload quickly. But Utah moves on after some disappointment this season to get to a bowl game. And another chance to watch Zach Moss. I know he's on your radar. He's been on your radar, but this game, 196 yards, two touchdowns. Feed the beast. He might be the next back of the future for these Utah Utes if he can stay healthy. And with an electric quarterback like Huntley and Moss and an offensive line basically coming back, losing just a couple guys, you have to like Utah's chances again to be very competitive yep. in the Pac-12 South. Well, they had lost 6-7, to seven, did not look anything like that team here tonight. 34-13. to 13. They defeat Colorado. The Utes are bowl eligible. We'll be back in Salt Lake City after this on FS1.